Hello again guys, it's Keith with Bulletproof RC. Now I'm back with you to share a quick update on my Losi Baja Ray Trophy Truck. Since my last video, I've done a few things to this vehicle and I just thought I would share what I've done and uh, my thoughts. First thing you'll notice is the green beadlock rings that are on the wheels. These are not the stock wheels that come on the Baja Ray. The stock Baja Ray has uh, wheels that look like this and soft compound tires and uh, no place to mount a ring. These are the SCBE wheels from the low C10 SCBE and they actually share the same part number as the low C TLR22 uh, wheels and they actually have mounting spots for beadlock rings. If you're interested in putting some beadlock rings on your vehicle there's your part number for the green ones. I can't help you for the orange ones, you'll have to do your own research and also have to do your own research for the TLR22 wheels. But this is more of a medium compound tire and I actually put these tires on this vehicle first simply because I was traction rolling a little bit, uh, running in the, in the grass and in the environment around my house and I wanted to actually reduce traction a little bit. I know that's not usually a, um, something that you're trying to do, but uh, just experiment around with different uh, wheel tire combinations and I like them. I like these medium compound tires on this truck. So the green actually stands out. It uh, makes the vehicle uh, show up a little a little further distance when you're running it and easier to keep track of the vehicle and it matches the Monster Energy theme. So anyway, why not, right? And then uh, next thing I did serves no function whatsoever but I put uh, SCTE mud flaps on the vehicle. Um, they bolt right up to the, the, the bumper the Baja Ray has. Uh, I'm sure that they've left these holes back here on purpose so you could use this but uh, Losi hasn't really notified us that this is possible but someone on the forums told me that these mud flaps fit and I actually had a set still on hand from when I used to have an SCTE. So anyway I mounted them up and I think they look pretty cool. Um, Another thing I did was I put carbon fiber vinyl wrap on the bottom of the chassis. Uh, you can buy this in bulk supply uh, on a heavy roll and it's automotive grade. It's easy to place and you can peel it off and place it several times or take it off, put it back on while you work on the vehicle. And uh, it's very resilient stuff. It um, protects the underside of the chassis but what I like about it most is that it actually uh, seals up this um, hatch that's on the bottom of the Baja Ray uh, to access the motor. Uh, some folks on the forums have been having a little bit of dirt and debris getting into the transmission through that hatch. So uh, anyway, by putting this uh, vinyl wrap over the chassis, that seals it up. You don't have to worry about that anymore. The next thing I did... Uh, I had to replace some bearings in this rear end, as you can see down here. Yeah, one of them blew on me. I'm hoping that this is a freak thing. I haven't heard of anybody else having this problem. But the inside bearing where the pinion is blew on this vehicle, and I heard some grinding in the rear end. Picked the truck up, immediately knew what it was. It took about 15 minutes because I actually had the size bearing that's needed in my pit box. So. It was actually something I did outside in 15 minutes and it didn't take any time at all. Um, I had this happen on my Axial Yeti score when I was using the AR60 stock axle before going to the SSD axle. I'm hoping that, that um, I put Avid bearings in it. I'm hoping they hold up a little better than the Losi bearings, but uh, those bearings may be a little undersized for this vehicle. We'll see. Time will tell. But again, I haven't heard of anybody else having problems, so I'm hoping that was just a freak thing and maybe I just had a defective bearing. Uh, the next thing I did was um, I changed my radio. <laughs> I like the stock radio just fine, uh, even though it's a little cheap, um, but I don't like the AVC controls. Now, I know that there's a lot of controversy around AVC and um, especially folks from the racer environment they don't like it very much and, and a lot of folks in the bash environment say you don't need ABC when you have four wheel drive. But I actually like it on this truck. I like using it with a trophy truck. 
What I don't like is when you turn the ABC up and you make your adjustments, you're also adjusting your throttle ABC. I don't like limitations on my throttle control. I turn punch control off immediately on any vehicle I have, any ESC I have. And um, what I didn't like was when I would turn my ABC up, I felt like um, I wasn't getting 100% throttle most of the time when I was running the vehicle either. So what I've done to counteract that is I picked up a uh, Spectrum DX4C. Now this, this is a, a great little radio and, and it's very cheap actually. Uh, they have a couple of different variations uh, depending on what receiver you get with the, the uh, remote. But I chose the $130 version, which comes with an ABC ESC, not ESC, receiver, excuse me guys, been a long day. But the good news is that it binds right up with the Baja Ray receiver. And it'll also bind right up with the Losi SCBE receiver. Uh, according to the manual, it will bind with any surface um, receiver that, lo uh, that Spectrum makes. So it, it's, a, it's a great radio. If you have several LOSI RTR vehicles and you want more adjustability, here you go, guys, because you can actually get this with a uh, non-ABC receiver for around 90 bucks, or maybe even cheaper with some coupons. But I chose the one that had the ABC receiver simply because I want to install the ABC receiver in my Axial Score trophy truck. That way I can have a little bit more apple-to-apple -apple comparisons between the Baja Ray and the Score trophy truck. But let me show you what I'm talking about, guys. The um, doing this through the camera, so bear with me. You, as you can see, you have several different uh, items of adjustability. I have my steering gain up to 66%. You can actually um, set which button controls that. And I'm actually using the button down here on the handle. I'm using it with my thumb right now. And I can adjust my ABC on the fly for just my steering, not my throttle. I've got my throttle set to switch A, which is right here. If I want to adjust that, I can. That way I don't have to have ABC on my throttle. The next thing I really like about this remote is it has a priority function as well. Now this priority function, what it does is actually serves as an override for ABC, which means I've got mine set to 97%, which means that in a straight line, ABC is gonna keep my wheel straight. But if I choose to go in a different direction or, or make slight adjustments with the steering, uh, I have 90%, 7% uh, priority over ABC, which means it really feels like you have total control with this vehicle. Uh, but yet, ABC does assist a little bit on keeping your rear end from sliding out on you. So anyway, I know ABC isn't for everybody, guys, but if it's something you're interested in trying and you have a couple of low-C vehicles, I highly recommend picking up a high-end Spectrum remote. Now, of course, this is the cheaper version. I think the DX4R, I might be wrong there. there. There's a little bit nicer one has the display on top. And I'm not real sure exactly which one it is. But anyway, this, this one's working well for me so far. I've, I've had several runs on it, and um, I, I'm enjoying it. And I've got it bound to both my SEBE and my BIRA, and soon... I will have it bound up with the axial score. So anyway, guys, that, that should do it for this video. Um, as always, like and subscribe to the Shoe Fits, and have a great day.